Hey friends, today's lesson may seem a bit overdue, but I'm finally going to go over Ableton Drum Rack. And in, within this series, I'm going to try to answer the ubiquitous question that I see constantly across the internet, and that's whether you should be using MIDI or if you should be using audio to create your drum racks. The spoiler is that you should be using both, um, but I see that it's commonly weighted toward the audio side, and this kind of confuses me because I really think that there are advantages to also using drum rack, and there are a lot of features, a lot of amazing things that you can do with it to really you know, fuel your creativity, to get a lot more complexity in your sound, so on and so forth. So in this lesson, we're gonna focus on what's under the hood of drum rack. Okay, so I've got a drum rack here, and I'll spare you me going through all my samples and trying to figure out which drum hits I wanna use, but at this point, I've got, I've got some drums in there. And in case you don't know how to use this at all, you essentially, when you open a drum rack, it looks something like this, and you have nothing in it, and all you gotta do is go through your samples, find something you like, and drag and drop it into a cell. So I'm gonna choose C2 right here, and then if I have a MIDI controller, I can play C2 and I get the sample. Or I can just hit the playhead on the drum rack itself. So now, on the piano roll, if I play C2, it's going to correlate to this sample. That's all, okay? So you just drag and drop a bunch of samples in there, and there you go, all right? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is I'm gonna record a drum loop. Cool, so now I've got a drum loop. I'm gonna double click on this drum loop so I can see it in my piano roll. And as you can see, the samples that I have in here are named. They're really easy to see, right? Uh, it's something Ableton 10 does. Now, if you have your headphone icon turned on, it's on blue, you can click on the samples and hear what they are, right? So I'm gonna click on this top bar and hit Command U. So now I've quantized my, my drum hit. So now I've got this. So that's my drum part. Okay, cool. So now that I've got this in here, let's take a look at drum rack a little bit more in depth. Right off the bat, when you drag and drop an audio sample into drum rack, you get this simpler device, right? So any sample I choose, and I drag it and drop it anywhere in here, I'm gonna get a simpler, right? It doesn't have to be that way. You can use other devices inside a drum rack. Drum rack is essentially just a container for devices. That's the, one of the best ways to describe it, right? So I can go into instruments, for example, and I'm gonna go into Wavetable, and Wavetable has all these percussive presets in here, right? So I'm gonna choose specific hat. I'm gonna drag and drop that into a cell, so G1. Now when I play G1, I've got specific, <laughs> I've got this the sound coming out of here, right? Okay, well that's cool. Well, so now that I've got a wavetable in here, I can do some really interesting things. Maybe one thing, I, you know, I think this is kind of low pitched for my taste, so I'm going to maybe mess around with the frequency of this high pass filter. Cool, so maybe I'll even modulate it. I'll go to my matrix and turn up LFO one and turn off retrigger so it just kind of flows freely. That's the decay time, right? And let's try maybe also on the filter frequency. That might be a bit too wide of a, there we go. So now we've got some changing sounds, right? So now I can go into my drum rack, uh, piano roll for this clip, and I'll hit B. I can now click on different cells and just quickly add, oops, I'm on the wrong sample. I can just quickly add some drum hits, right? And maybe I can click and drag and now I get this whole, <laughs> I can just add a bunch of drum hits to this. Now because I've got my grid on adaptive, right? It It's on the narrow mode. If I just zoom in, I just constantly get more and more subdivisions of time, right? So what's cool about that is I can quickly add trills to different parts. 
Okay, so now I've got <laughs> That's fun. So let's go ahead and just add another little trill here at the end. Why not? So trill. All right. So now I've got this hi-hat functioning on an entirely different instrument than a simpler. Okay. So, you know, a lot of the advantages of drum rack is that it's just a shell for devices. So these devices could be doing different things. But in and of that, you may think, well, I think that hat's a little loud. And yeah, I agree. You know, one thing that you can do is you can go into each device and turn it up or down based on its control, right? But each one of these devices is going to have a different control, so that can get kind of confusing. So now we're going to crack open drum rack and see what else is available. I'm going to close my macros out for now, and I'm just going to look at this view. This is the show hide chain list. So here's your chain list. And as you can see in the chain list, you have this handy dandy mixer. Okay, you've got panning, volume, and if you look at the session view, you can also look at it this way by expanding open the drum rack, okay? So in here, we've got specific hat. Now it's loud right now when I play this, right? We've got it's kind of up in my face. I don't want that. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. And now I've got, maybe it makes more sense now. So I'm going to look at my amp, and I'm going to kind of shorten this decay time a little bit so we get a, maybe a little bit better of a... There we go. Cool. Okay, so now that we've got that figured out, let's explore more of what's available in this chain list. So in this chain list, we have a bunch of devices, right? You can play each one of them by going over this this area. Now let's let's think of something else. Maybe this... Maybe this clap... You know, I'd like to add, I have a little me jangling my keys sample right here. And now something that's very common in, in production nowadays is that you have layers for your sounds, right? You have more than one kick sample, more than one snare or clap sample, twos and fours sample, right? You have all these different samples that correlate to each one of these things. And they say, well, I don't use drum rack because I'm going to have to go through here and make each one of these samples sample at the same time. Well, this is really simple to do with drum rack you click this little button right here, show hide input output section. Now, you can see that, let's say I want every time my clap to happen, I also want my jangling keys, right? Well, this is really simple. The keys that are correlated with this clap sound is D1, and the key that is associated with the jangling keys happens to be D sharp. If I choose D1 though, now every time you, you can see what's happened in Drumrack is that it's, it's created a multi. And within this multi, I have two samples. And I can see them by making sure that I'm showing my, my chain, right? <laughs> now when we play this clip, we get... So that's pretty rad. Now I can play both of these samples at the same time, but I can still go in here and edit each one of them. So I still have, you know, volume control. And let's look at the next thing. Now, maybe something else you're thinking is, well, your twos and fours sounds, they need a little bit of reverb. Well, yeah, I agree. So maybe I'll do the next thing and I'll, I'll hit this show hide returns list. So now you've got this place where you can drag and drop effects that can apply to drums. So I'm gonna grab a reverb and drag it into here. And now what I can do, if I show the sends, I can now send a certain amount of any of these samples to the reverb. So I'll turn up send A. And as you can see, both of the multis are being turned up to be sent to the reverb. So now we have... And of course, because this is a send effect, I need to turn the dry wet all the way up. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Now you might be saying, well, Anthony, I've already made a reverb on my normal send. How can I use drum rack to send those sounds to this reverb instead? Well, you can also right click here, create return track, and it says return chain. And at this point, it's being routed to the rack output. Well, something else I can do is I can just go A reverb. Now you'll notice here, if we look at this level, I can choose, I'll delete my original reverb. I can choose to send these out to that reverb instead. So now I get 
right? You can see that out of the drum rack, we're going into this reverb. So now we've solved the issue of drum racks kind of being enclosed into their own environment, right? Awesome. I also wanted to take this time to tell you that I'm creating Ableton online courses. They'll be covering macro topics like mixing, sound design, composition, songwriting, live performance, synthesis, and so on. Now I should say you can always learn anything that you want to learn on YouTube, but much of the time it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for. These courses will be thorough, optimized, and organized to help take your skills to the next level quickly. So if you like my teaching style, check this link out. At the time of this video, I've only just begun creating the courses, but if you want to be notified when they're available, visit this link and I'll notify you when they come out. All right, let's get back to it. So something else that we might want to do is add an open hi-hat to this. Now let's go ahead and, and find an open hi-hat in my samples. Okay, cool. So here's an open hi-hat sound. Now I'm going to drag and drop that into the F sharp track. And maybe I'll go in here and I'll add some of that. Maybe right here. So instead of having these I'll add my my open hat right there. And maybe I'll do it kind of at the end of every every beat. Okay, so now I've added some open hat. Let's listen to this. All right, so that's kind of obnoxious because the hat is not closing like it would in real life. It's not closing when this next sample hits, right? That's annoying. So something that you can do is you also have choke groups, right? So I could put both the specific hat, which remember, isn't even a sample. This is a synthesizer making a hat sound, right? Let's also turn that down maybe just a little bit. What I can also do is I can choke these out together. You have 16 groups of choke available. And what that means is that when one sample plays, the other one will stop, okay? it's It will instantly cut off that sample. It'll choke it out, right? So. I'm going to choose choke group one for both of these. And now when you listen to this loop, we get. Awesome. See, see how great that is. That's just, that's just really great for me. So maybe the next thing that you're thinking is, okay, well now I want to process these drums and how am I going to process each one of these drums separately? Well, Something that you should know is that within drum rack, each one of these cells can have its own chain of effects. So maybe we'd want to, you know, a classic thing that you might want to do is put a compressor on the kick drum so that you can get more umph from it, right? So let's grab a compressor. And if I drag it and drop it in the chain list over the kick drum, or I just drag it and drop it over the cell, you'll notice that now there's a compressor on the kick drum, okay? But let's say, I'm going to close the chain list for now. If I click on another sample, such as this multi, you'll notice that the compressor isn't on any of these other tracks, right? How nice is that? I only have a compressor on the kick drum. So now I can go in here and maybe make some adjustments and get kind of a nice compressed sound for my kick drum. So now we get... Cool. Now I've got a nicer, kind of snappier kick drum. So each one of these cells could have its own effect chain. Cool. So let's go ahead and open the chain list and I'm going to show you something else. Now, you also have output routing, okay? We've shown you output routing for the return tracks, but something else that we can do, I'm going to delete this return track and I'm going to grab a reverb and throw it back into here. And this reverb is going to be specifically for this drum rack, okay? So I'm going to open the pre-delay up a little bit, turn the dry wet all the way up, kind of turn this down a little bit, and I'm going to send... Now I've sent some of the sound to this reverb from my twos and fours sound, right? So I get... Something else you can do is create another return chain. And this return chain could have all kinds of stranger effects in it, like maybe a frequency shifter. Let's put a frequency shifter in here. It's one of my favorite effects. And I'm going to turn it on wide mode, turn this down a little bit, and get some modulation going. Now, this at this point, this frequency shifter is doing nothing. But if I choose on my hats 
to instead of go to the rack output, I'm going to go to the frequency shifter instead. What happens is now this frequency shifter is kind of an insert effect, but for both of these drum hits. So now I've got... Now you can hear that. Oh, they're just swirling around your head, right? <laughs> That's crazy. So this is now an insert effect for those. So the final thing I'm gonna go over in today's lesson is macros. Macros are really powerful. If this is the, the button that you hit to see them, macros can control multiple parameters at once. And this is really, really powerful stuff. So how would I map a macro? Well, one thing you can do is hit the map key and then anything you see that highlights in green is available as a macro control, okay? That's one thing you can do. But what I also wanna show you that you can do is, let's say, let's say there's a control within here that I've found that I want to control. Maybe one thing that I would like to do is transpose the drums. If I right click on this, I can go to map to macro one, okay? Now, you can do this really fast. If I close down my chain list, let's say I want to edit the macros of all, I wanna be able to transpose all my drums. Well, let's click on each one of these drums specifically, right click on its transposition, map to transpose. I'll also do that for this one, map to transpose, map to transpose, so on and so forth forever. And then maybe in my hat, I'm gonna have to go into this transpose button, map to transpose. So now, all of my drums, let's play this. <laughs> now I've got a macro control that can change the transposition of all of these together. Now, as you can see, the transpose moved the center of this specific hat, and I don't like that. So if I click on the map button, I can see uh, in a list up here what the ranges are, okay? So what I can do now is go to this specific hat and say, well, it actually already was kind of high. So I'm gonna let it go between 19 and 48. So now we've got... <laughs> so that's crazy. So now what's cool is I can go in here and Maybe this is part of a live performance, or maybe I just want to look at my automation here and I can just automate this transposition around. That might be kind of wild, but let's just check it out. There's so much potential for macros to do incredible things. So a real stark advantage to using drum rack is that, you know, once you've got all this routing going on, you've got sends and returns, you've got each individual drum hit with its own effects chain and stuff like that. This is a lot of work. Now, but once you get this finished, there's always the classic little disc icon you can click on and save this as my sweet drum rack. And now it's your sweet drum rack forever. Now this is a tool that you can drag and drop into different sets and you can adjust a couple things and you can kind of develop your own sound. It's a really good idea to make drum racks and make racks in general, instrument racks, effect racks, and things like that. This will save you time in the future, okay? Then all you gotta do is go in here and you've got your quick hot swap mode so you can check out a sample and replace one sample with another sample and you've already got your routings made, you know, you're, you're ready to roll. So this can really help you save time. So yeah, that was just a quick overview of what is under the hood in drum rack. In the next lesson, we're going to go over uh, some of the advantages to using MIDI when creating your drums versus using audio right off the bat. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll check you out soon. See ya.